theory just that's been a conversation. But let me say they say it was destroyed by sulfur and fire because of their wickedness, wickedness. Fire and brimstone, so sulfur. So that's Genesis 19. So let's go to Genesis. Okay, here we go. I want to read it. This is to back up what I'm saying about the bed being undefiled. Right? So when you start bringing stuff into your bedroom based on previous relationships, how it's feeling to you, what they do, I like them doing that. See what I'm saying? God gives you this pleasure hormone to have sex in a pure way, in a godly way, not in a Sodom and Gomorrah way. So let's go on. Let me say, let me go. Because he went, God talked to Abraham first. Abraham intercede for Sodom. Okay, so I'm just going to go because I was trying to get so you could see what was going on with them. So, in, in Genesis 18, it talks of, a, of God and Abraham. Talking. So we're going to start from there. Genesis 18 and the 16th verse says. Okay, so Genesis 18, starting at the 16th verse. And the men rose up from thence and looked towards Sodom. And Abraham went with them to bring them on the way. Now the men are angels. And the Lord said, Shall I hide from Abraham that thing? which I do, seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation, and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. So in other words, God is asking the angels. Okay. And he's saying that And he's saying that should he tell Abraham what he's going to do or should he keep it from Abraham? And the reason why God is questioning himself is because Abraham is precious to him. Right? And is his servant. So... Should he tell Abraham what he's about to do? Because Abraham's nephew is over there, which is Abraham's brother, son. And he was taking care of him. And Lot, his name is Lot. And Lot felt some kind of way. And so Abraham wanted to keep the peace. He allowed Lot to pick where he wanted the land that he wanted. 
and he picked it the good land the land that where he could where him and abraham was he could see that this land oh it's a lot of tents over there excuse me it looked like a lot of cattle over there that looked like where the money is over on this side was nothing ain't nothing happening over here so he picked that side and that that was where side he picked it say he pitched his tent towards sodom so therefore it, it could mean that he was in the village of sodom or it could mean that he was maybe a few miles away from Sodom. But the the fact of the matter is, is that he was near Sodom or in Sodom. So let's go on. So now he's saying, seeing that Abraham, okay. For I know him that he will commend his children and his household after him. And they shall keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he had spoken of him. So in other words, he's saying that Abraham took care of his household. His children listened to him. His, he, Abraham followed after the Lord. He, he commended his children and his household after him to do what he said. Whatever he's doing, if he say we're praying at six, the whole household pray. It doesn't matter whether they're in the house with him or they, his tent is over here. His kids will be like, well... Well, well, Daddy pray every every day at 6 p.m. Come on, y'all. We got to pray at 6 p.m. They followed whatever Abraham taught them. And the Lord said, because the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah is great, the devilment that they was doing in that city was coming up to God. See, God hears. Let me tell you something. God hears everything. God hears everything. And the sins that's down here on this earth, believe me, is just like this. He hears it. And he sent COVID because he got tired of it. Just like he destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, just like he destroyed the world with a flood. You see what I'm saying? And he promised Abraham, he promised Mo Moses. Noah, he promised Noah that it won't be water but fire next time. And that's exactly. He destroyed it, a whole city with fire. Okay. And the Lord said, because the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah is great, and because their sins is very grievous, I will go down. Look what God said. Let me go back. And the Lord said, so that's God. I will go down and see whether they have done all together according to the cry of it, Lord Jesus, which is come unto me. And if not, I will know. So in other words, he's saying he personally is going to make an appearance down on this earth. Not in the flesh. He personally is going to make an appearance on the earth at that time, Abraham being alive. And he's going to go to Sodom and Gomorrah, and he's going to look, and he's going to see for himself whether the cry that's coming up to, to him, all the devilment that they're doing, he's going to know whether it's the truth or not. And Abraham drew near, so I guess he talked, okay. And the men turned their faces from thence and went towards Sodom. But Abraham stood yet before the Lord. So here we go. So now, it's Abraham, it's God, and it's two men. So those are two angels. So it was two angels, Abraham, God. So it was four of them all together. So, God was talking to the two angels, right? And so, you got to understand that heaven is full of angels, number of angels up there. And every angel has an assignment and is given an assignment. So, there was angels in heaven with God that were able to appear as humans, right? They no, Now, don't look at them as being... You know, like, 
see through people like you see through them like ghosts no they was actually i'm i'm gonna presume they was angels they appeared as angels you see what i'm saying so they but in 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 the human flesh because adam was flesh and 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 the people was flesh so he had to appear to them as they were otherwise maybe they would have listened to him if he had came exactly as an angel but he came as a man get out of here but anyway so let's see uh okay so now the men turned their faces from thence and went towards Sodom. So in other words, the the conversation that God and Abraham going to have, God done had it with the angels. So then, he, so they were sent out to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. There was, there was going to be no ifs, ands, or buts about it. They, they, they came to destroy because God already, he said he going to see. And if it's like, if it's like whether they have done all together according to the cry of it. So the, 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 the sins, the, the devilment, the, the evilness that was in Sodom and Gomorrah was coming up to God was 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 getting all in his nostrils so remember he said sin stinks in his nostrils so it was coming all up in his nostrils so he's like let me go down there and let me see if that's really going on now he know what's going on but he know he's gonna have a chat with Ad, with adam he knew you're gonna have a chat with abraham so he went on down so let's go on and abraham drew near and said, will thou also destroy the righteous with the wicked? <laughs> so he kind of like testing him. Like, I'm sure Abraham don't quite know what's going on in Solomon and Gomorrah. He don't know whether there's any righteous people in there. He know that his nephew is in there. So he's going to try to plead a case for his nephew and any other righteous people that's in there. But he also knew that God knew all things. But he was like, well, let me just try this anyway. It says down here, God gave the men. Wait a minute, where was that? There was something in here. Okay, it said, why did God. Why did God let Abraham question his justice and intercede for a wicked city abraham knew that god must punish sin but he also knew him knew from experience that god is merciful to sinners so that's why he was questioning said are you going to destroy the wicked and you going to destroy the 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 You do want to destroy the righteous with the wicked? That's why he asked that question. God knew there were not 10 righteous people in the city. But he was merciful enough to allow Abraham to intercede. He was also merciful enough to help Lot, Abraham's nephew, get out of Sodom before it was destroyed. See? God does not take pleasure in destroying the wicked, but he must punish sin. He is both just and merciful. We should be thankful that God's mercy extends to us. See what I'm saying? People don't even think that. That's what I'll be telling my husband. But anyway. So let's go back. Let's, let's continue rather. Preadventure, there be 50 righteous within the city. Will thou also destroy and not spare the place for the 50 righteous that are therein? This is, that, that, that's what we call by interceding. That's why sometimes God puts on the saint heart to pray. And you'll all, I'll speak of myself. I will just order, 
all of a sudden, somebody will drop in my spirit and I'll be led to pray for that person. That's the end to see. God is letting me know that something is about to transpire with that person. Just like he did to, to Abraham. He's about, he, he done send the man, done sent, done sent the angels to destroy. They, but they not going to destroy until their conversation is finished. But he has the conversation with the two men. Let him know, well, I, I'm i thinking about tell, not telling Abraham, but I should tell Abraham. Because after all, he do got a nephew there. After all, he is righteous. After all, his family, you know, do, do what he tells them to do. They do give him respect. So... I'm going I'm to have that much respect for him. That, that's why I say in my message, can God trust you? So when he comes and make a, and when, when that time comes from him, for him to make a decision in reference to something or someone you know, will he trust you enough to come to you and confide in you what he's about to do and allow you to intercede for whomever it is that he's about to destroy? You see what I'm saying? That's something, that's something deep. That's, that's real deep right there. So, um, and I feel very honored when he puts on me to pray for certain people and I pray and God deliver them. And I have to give God praise. Just like with, with Billy, I have to give him praise because he, I intercede. I don't know what was going on at the time, but it was put on me to get on my knees and pray for this boy. And I got on my knees and I prayed for him. And I asked God to do something. And God did it. Okay. It wasn't what whatever the result was. It didn't have nothing to do with me. I asked God for something. I asked God to allow the gentleman, the boy to hear the word. To come into church so he can hear the word. Bring him out of there. And, and let him hear the word. And, and that's what was done. He was... Excuse me. He was back in there. He went back in there. But it's still an answer to the prayer because he went back in there and God brought him back out. So God brought him to the church. Now the whole thing is, is what did they do with it? Did I pray that? Was that something that they wanted also? Did they want their son to be saved? Yeah, you say it all the time. I want my child to be saved. I want my child to be saved. But do you really want the child to be saved? When God opened up the door and bring the child into the church, then you take advantage of what God has done. You don't demolish the, 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 the opportunity. You don't take the glory upon it. You stop what you're doing and allow God to do the rest. Make the altar call. Give the opportunity for the child to come to the altar and get saved. That was not done. So let's go on with Solomon and Gomorrah. Okay. That be far from thee to do after this manner. To slay the righteous with the wicked. And that the righteous should be as the wicked. That be far from thee. Shall not the judge of all the earth do right? This is Abraham talking to God. And the Lord said, if I find in Sodom 50 righteous within the city, then I will spare all the place for their sake. So here we go. Let's go back to the men that God was first talking to. And let's go back a little bit because it says here. And the men turned their faces from thence and went towards Sodom. But Abraham stood yet. Before the Lord. Right? So, with that being said, where it says here, if I find in Sodom 50 righteous within the city. So, now we know God knows all things. So, those men turned their faces and went towards Sodom. So, I guess, in other words, these men left Abraham and God talking and went walking towards Sodom. So let's say Sodom is like two days, three days, because it was days. It took days to, to get to where you was going there because you walked everywhere. 
So now within that time that they're talking, they're walking, Abraham and God is talking. And Abraham is interceding. I was going to use the word negotiating, but he's not negotiating. He, he is interceding so that God will not destroy the sinners, especially if there's righteous people. Now remember, Abraham don't know. God knows. So that's why he said, okay. If I find in Sodom 50 righteous within the city, then I will spare. Now, 25th verse says, footnote says, was God being unfair to the people of Sodom? Did he really plan to destroy the good with the wicked? On the contrary, God's fairness stood out. One, he agreed to spare the entire city. See what I'm saying? If only 10 godly people lived there. Now, I'm sure it was more than 10 people in there. But this is where his grace and mercy would have take, would have, would have been seen if there was only 10 people that was righteous there. The whole city, even though the city was dead, oh, the city was sinful. But if it was 10 righteous people there, then it was a possibility that the city could get right. That's why he knew it wasn't no 10 people there. Because <laughs> at least if it was 10 to the different cities, well, I mean, I'm not even going because there's more than 10 righteous people, I'm sure, in the world today. And it's devastating. Okay, so now let's go in and say, one, he agreed to spare the entire city if only 10 godly people lived there. Two, he showed great mercy towards Lot, apparently the only man in the city who had any kind of relationship with him. And even that was questionable. See what I'm saying? Three, he showed great patience towards Lot, almost forcing him to leave Sodom before it was destroyed. Okay. Now let's go back up to the scripture. Now we up to the 26th verse. 27th verse. And Abraham answered. And said. Behold now. I have taken upon me. To speak unto the Lord. Which am but dust and ashes. Now he is. He is. At a place. In his life, talking to God, a person of prestige. And he's saying, I'm but dust and I'm but ashes. I know that's all I am. I can disappear like this. But pre-adventure, there shall lack five. Of the 50 righteous. Without destroy all the city. For lack of five. So out of the 50. If there's only five. If, if there's only five. That is. Not righteous. Will you destroy. The whole 50. Right. Right here we go. Because he started out with 50. This is good because I always thought he kept going down to 50, 45, 10. No, no, no. This is what he did. He, he, he said 50 righteous. And God said that if I find 50 righteous within the city, a whole 50, he won't destroy. So now Abraham is thinking. He's saying, okay. He probably know it ain't no 50. Okay, so now if there's five out of that 50 that is not righteous, will you destroy the whole 50 still? So God said, pre-adventure. Okay, wait a minute, wait a minute. And he said, if I find there 45, because remember you said five. If I find 45 that's righteous and only five not, in other words, I'll just destroy. I, I, I won't destroy the city. 
Then he spoke again and he said, Preadventure there shall be 45 there. 40 found there. He said, all right, if there's 40 people that's righteous, I won't destroy the city. And he said, oh, my goodness, here you go. He, he, he interceding again. We may look at that and negotiate it. Here you go again. And he says unto him, oh, let not the Lord be angry. Please don't be angry with me because I know I'm probably getting on your nerve and you want to get to, you want to, you want to go in about your business, right? But, um. Oh, let not the, the Lord be angry, and I will speak. Preadventure there shall 30 be found. So now he done went from 50 to 45 to 40. Now he's saying 30. If there be 30 that is righteous, will you not destroy the city? He said, Jesus, God said, I will not do it if I find 30. And he said, Behold now, I have taken upon me to speak unto the Lord. Here, here, here we go again. But he has so much respect for God. As that, 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 that's, that's how I am when I'm, when I'm talking in Bible study and I want to say something. And I feel like people are going to get offended by what I say. I quickly say no disrespect. And this, this, no disrespect to nobody in. This is just in my opinion. This is how I feel. I try to hurry up and clarify that because <laughs> I don't want to be destroyed. Okay, so pre-adventure there shall be 20 found there. So he went all the way from 40, took a whole 40, 30, 20, took a whole 20 off. So now he's down to 20. Pre-adventure there shall be 20 found there. And he said, I will not destroy for 20 sake. God is just standing there listening and accepting and giving him the ability to intercede for this city. And he said, oh, let not the Lord be angry. He didn't even finish it. And I will speak yet, but this once. I mean, this is the last time I'm going to say something. Preadventure 10. shall be found there. And he said, I will not destroy it for ten sake. So now we're going to go on and we're going to keep reading because I really want to know whether God personally went. Because he said he said he was going, but I thought that was the going that he was going to when he talked to Abraham. But we're going back to the beginning of that particular passage that I was reading. It lets us know that he was having a conversation with the two men first. And in the presence, uh, before the presence of Abraham. And then Abraham came into the presence. Okay. Now it goes on to say, God shewed, let's go to the footnotes. God showed Abraham that asking for anything is allowed with the understanding that God's answers come from God's perspective. I like that. I like that. We can ask God for whatever we want, but our answers is going to come from how he's looking at it, not how we're looking at it. So that's why I say I want to throw this in here and give you all a heads up. You may hear people say, you praying and praying and praying and God ain't answered. And sometimes he don't never answer. He ain't answer. But I'm here to tell you, according to this, they say you can ask God for anything, and anything you ask for is allowed to be asked for. But just make sure that the understanding of God's answers is based on his perspective, not ours. So therefore, what does that mean? That means that God answers, just like he answered him. He answered him in reference to, no, if there's 20 people there, that was the last part of it, I won't kill them. That's what he said he ain't going to do, and he's not going to do it. But his perspective is that he already know how many people is near. And he know ain't no righteous there but lots. So he didn't go down to one. He went to 20. So since there was no 20 people there, he showed mercy to Lot 
Because Lot was in that that 20 that was going to die. But because Abraham was who he was in God's sight, and Lot was who he was in God's sight, God spared Lot because of what Lot was doing, and God spared Abraham because Lot was connected to Abraham. But he did not spare the city because the city sinned. Lot didn't sin. Abraham didn't sin. But in his life, Lot's life was in question. But it wasn't in question. It wasn't in question for the life he was living in Sodom and Gomorrah, like Sodom and Gomorrah. It was questioning upon his life with God. But at that point, that wasn't the necessity of God's visit. Excuse me. So now let's go on. For only he knows the whole. Okay, here we go. That God answers come from God's perspective. They are not always in harmony with our expectation. So we praying. We don't get an answer. So the first thing we say that God didn't answer. Then, then that means the scriptures are lies. So you can ask anything in my name, and I'll give it to you. If it's in my will, if you're not doubting. But just because you don't see the answer, it does not mean it was not answered. You just don't see it yet. But keep on living. You won't see that what you prayed for is going to come to pass. And when it come to pass, it's going to be in satisfaction to you because you're going to know that that's the answer to your prayer. Woo, I love studying the word because I learned God opened up revelations to me while I'm reading this word. Okay, so let me go on because I don't want to be, I don't want to weary up here, Sean. So, the, the, wait, let me, title of this will be Sodom and Gomorrah. All right. And the Lord went his way. As soon as he had left communion, com communion with Abraham. Here we go. Didn't I just say this? Let me read this. They are not always, God's answers are not always in harmony with our expectations. For only he knows the whole story. And and this is backing up what I just said. Are you missing God's answer to a prayer? Because you haven't considered any possible answers other than the one you expect. So you praying for money. I'm going to use money because everybody talks about money. Everybody wants money. So you praying for money, asking God to give you money. Lord, I need money for this. I need money for that. So you're expecting a big check to come in the mail. You're expecting somebody to come and hand you the amount of money that you need. But you totally not even thinking about you go to the mailbox and you got a a thirty dollar check because you need a thousand dollar check. What you need the money for costs a thousand dollars. But God gave you twenty dollars. $50 in a check in the mail and you took it, oh, I got me some money. I don't know where this money come from. I'm going to spend it. And you go spend it. You get back on your knees and say, Lord, I'm still waiting for this $1,000 check. This $1,000 money because I still got this bill I got to pay. He sent you $50. You, was pay, you supposed to take that 50 and save it or you supposed to take that 50 and put it towards your bill. No, you spent it. And you still waiting. So now you never get the answer. So you think because you didn't get the thousand dollars that you needed for that bill. But God gave you fifty dollars because he was going to send it in increments. He was going to send it to you partially in different amounts. And you looking for the big. So he answered it. Okay, so let's go on. And the Lord went his way. And Abraham returned it unto his place. Genesis 19. And there came two angels to Sodom at evening. 
And Lot sat in the gate of Sodom. And Lot, seeing them, rose up to meet them. And he bowed himself with his face towards the ground. And he said, Behold now, my lords, turn in, I pray you, into your servant's house, and tarry all night, and wash your feet, and ye shall rise up early, and go on your way. Lot ain't had no idea that these men was coming to save his life, and to destroy the city that he was in. He had no idea that all his goods and everything was about to get burnt down. But he respected these men because I guess inwardly he saw that they was men of God. He probably didn't know they was angels. But he knew that they was men of God. So here we go. The city gate, just the footnote, the city gate was the meeting place for city officials and other men to discuss covering events and transact business. It was a place of authority and statues where a person could see and be seen. Evidently, Lot held an important position in the government or associated with those who did because the angels followed, found him at the city gate. And that's why Lot enjoyed himself and never left Lot. Not, I mean, not Lot. Yeah, that's why Lot enjoyed himself and never left Sodom because of his position that he was in. And the position he was in caused him to be rich. And that's what he wanted. Perhaps Lot's stat status in Sodom was one reason he was so reluctant to leave. See? Okay. All right, so go on. All right. And they said, nay, but we will abide in the street all night. So they was going, staying in the street. So they can see what it was about. Remember, God said that He was going to see for you know for Himself. So they was they was going and they was going to check it out. He told them to come and say, "No, I'm 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 chill. I'm, we going we going to stay out here all night." And He pressed upon them, meaning that He kept begging them and telling them to come upon them greatly, and they turned in unto Him. So. Being that he kept bothering because Lot knew what it was about. He knew that these, those crazy men was going to be after these men. They must was good looking or whatever. All right. And they turned in unto him and entered into his house. And he made them a feast and did bake unleavened bread and they did eat. But before they laid down, the men of the city, even the men of the city, of Sodom, so this is the whole city, not only the city he lived in, but the whole Sodom city, that's like, not on, not only Malcolm X, but the whole Brooklyn was at his door, okay, so, come past the house, round, both old and young, all the people from every quarter, that's a lot of people, they were suppressing the house, meaning that they was banging on the doors, pushed up against the windows, trying to get to these men. And they called unto Lot and said unto him, Where are the men which came into thee this night? I didn't know that. I didn't know that. Somebody was watching and went, went and told it. Okay. Bring them out unto us that we may know them. Back in the days, Bible tell, Bible times. Remember Adam no knew and he knew his wife. That means sexual sexual stuff going on here. So they wanted Lot to let the men go from their house, from within his house, so that they could have sex with him. A man to a man. See what I'm saying? See what I'm saying? So you think you're supposed to be in your bed having inner sex with your woman. When God didn't like it in Sodom and Gomorrah. Because man to man mean that you're going to have anal sex. You can't do nothing in the front. Because ain't nothing in the front. That's where it say the bed is undefiled. Because that's the pureness of it. That, that separates animal from man. Because he made a woman to have something that a man can penetrate through the front. And he made the animal to have something to penetrate through the back. So why would you want to put yourself in the same category as an animal? 
you is made in the image of God. And we see here that God wasn't pleased. So let's go on. Bring them out unto us that we may know them. Lord Jesus. How and Lot went out at the door unto them and shut the door after him. So he stepped out of his little hut. <laughs> closed the door behind him and began to talk to these men. And this is what he said. He said and said, I pray you, brethren, do not so wickedly. Don't do this thing. It's wicked. Behold now, I have two daughters, which I have not known, which have not known men. He had two daughters that was virgins. So he's trying to introduce the right things to these men. Take my daughters. Don't mess with these men. This is not, I guess he didn't want to straight out say this is against God's plans because they probably would have grabbed him and took him. <laughs> and knew him. So he said, take my daughters, which have not known men. Let me, I pray you, bring them out unto you. Hold on. Let's wait one second. I'll go get them. You ain't even got to come. No, you ain't got to come in the house. I'll bring them out personally to you. And do ye to them as is good in your eyes. Whatever you want to do to them, you go ahead and do it. That's why, that's why the word said, the bed is undefiled. You're not supposed to be doing what he's doing. He's doing to save these men. Take my daughters. Do whatever because I already know what you're doing. You see what I'm saying? Because I'm sure he passed temples. I'm sure they out. They all out in the street doing all this foolishness. They all up in the stores. They all up in cabinets and all on top of the roofs. Everywhere you turn, you just see two men together, two women together. Orgies, all this stuff going on, animals, all of this. So he know what they're going to do. So instead of doing it to the men, instead of doing it to the animals, do it to my daughters. You see what I'm saying? He giving up his daughters. That was a thing back then. Oh, Lord Jesus. Okay. And do ye to them as is good in your eyes. Only unto these men do nothing. For therefore came they under the shadow of my roof. Don't touch them. Please don't touch them. Because these are friends that I know. These are people that I know. So everybody in the city knew that Lot was pure. Knew that he wasn't into all that stuff. So anybody that come to visit them, they know that they pure. So instead of them being like, all right, all right, give me your daughter. No, they wanted them because they was mm, yeah, pure people. So these people had this nastiness in their head. So let's go on. And they said, stand back. And they said again, this one fellow came into sojourney and he will need to be judged. Now will we deal worse with thee than with them? So now they saying that, let me see what they saying. Okay, let me go back to the thing. It say the phrase that we may know them means the men wanted to have sexual relations with Lot's guests. How could any father give his daughter to be ravished by a mob of perverts? just to protect two strangers. Possibly Lot was scheming to save both the girls and the visitors, hoping the girls' fiancés, oh, oh, I got you. I see what he's saying. Will rescue them or that the homosexual men will be uninterested in the girls and simply go away. Okay. Although it was the custom of the day to protect guests at any cost, this terrible suggestion reveals how deeply sin had been absorbed into Lot's life. Wow. So in other words, they're saying that he was in the wrong. He had become hardened to evil acts in an evil city. Whatever Lot's motive was, we see here an illustration of Sodom's terrible wickedness. A wickedness so great 
that God had to destroy the entire city, Lord Jesus. So it's saying, this is saying that got hot in here all of a sudden. Hey, Google, turn on the air conditioner. Hey, Google, turn on air conditioner. Changing the Sharon air conditioner to cool. All right, so it's saying here that Sodom, that Sodom, that Lot was wrong for even putting his daughters out there. But it also was saying that Maybe he was doing it, hoping that your fiance would come and rescue him. But the bottom line is, is that his heart was hardened, meaning that he was at a place where he didn't. He didn't care too much about what they was going to do. Because just think, when he wasn't thinking, if they would have said, okay, give us an order. All of them. He really went out there. Brought out his daughter. The fiance would have came out. And they would have wound up taking them too. Lord Jesus. The whole weakness of Sodom had destroyed lots ability to even think straight and do the right thing. So let's go on. So they say They said, stand back. In other words, telling him to stand back. And they say again, this one fellow came in to sojourn. And he will need to be judged. So there's somebody. I think they're talking about these two men. I think they're saying that somebody came into the city that was supposed to be judged. And now we will deal worse with thee than with them. So in other words, they not gonna even deal with them with that person that came in. They gonna go to the to him and mess with those men. Hope that made sense. I mean let me just break it down like that. Somebody must have came into the city to be judged. A sojourn that came into the city. A sojourn is somebody that's traveling and and just stopped in for cookies and milk. And so now they got a hold to that man, and they was about to do whatever they was gonna do with that man. But once these people come in, they said we would deal worse with V, meaning his him, than with them. So, and they pressed sore upon the men, even Lot, and came near to break the door. But the men put forth their hand and pulled Lot into the house to them and shut the door. So they pulled Lot into it. And they smote, smote the men that were at the door of the house with blindness, both small and great, so that they wearied themselves to find the door. So 
they blind them. The angels blind them. And the man said unto Lot, Hast thou here any besides, son-in-law, and thy sons, and thy daughters, and whatsoever thou hast in the city, bring them out of this place? See, that was, that was, that, that was a T right there. That was it. God let him know, destroy this city now. Because he ain't found nobody. He ain't even find 20. He ain't even find five. Bring them out of this place. For we will destroy this place. Because the cry of them is waxing great before the face of the Lord. And the Lord has sent, and the Lord has sent us to destroy it. So what I said. He already said. And Lot went out and spake unto his sons-in-law, which married his daughters. I thought he said it was fiancés. Hmm. So why why didn't he describe it in the footnotes as a husband? He said fiancés. And said, up, get you out of this place. For the Lord will destroy this city. But he seemed as one that mocked unto his sons-in-law. So his sons-in-law was like, ain't paying him no mind. Okay, so let's read this. God promised to spare Sodom if only 10 godly people lived there. Obviously, not even 10 could be found because the angels arrived to destroy the city. Wait, 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 wait. That, that would sound like wrong. Let me read this again. And it's the same thing I said. I had said that God already knew that there wasn't no 50. There wasn't no 40. There wasn't no 30. There wasn't no 20. Right? Knew that. So, therefore, they went down to 10. There wasn't no 10. He knew there wasn't no, nobody there. So, and the reason why he knew and we knew reading this is because he sent the men. When we read in the beginning, he said, remember, remember that passage where I said, that verse where I said that the men turned their face? And went walking towards Sodom. That means they was going to destroy. And so while they was walking. Um, Abraham and, and God was talking. But it was already in the plan. So the interceder was Abraham. And the, 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 the I'll use the word ne negotiate. The negotiation number was 10. So once. They would have got there, and if them men that was pushing up against Lot, if they had decided to forget and turn away and leave the angels, then that would have been more than 10, because everybody was following one another. So if one or two or three or maybe five would have been like, all right, after Lot talked, in the heat, because he was speaking loud to a whole big crowd, and they would have been like, all right, come on, y'all. Let's, let's go back to this man that we was messing with. We don't want his girls, because his girls got husbands, and we ain't messing. This, this is like, this, this family's like, Lot don't do nothing. He's a good man. He's a righteous man, so we ain't gonna mess. We'll leave him alone. So, them saying that they would have left Lot alone due to the fact that he being righteous is giving honor to God and respecting Lot for his relationship with God. And so that would have been more than 10. But they was about to destroy Lot, his house, and go in there and get them men. Okay, so let's go on. Obviously, not even 10 could be found because the angels arrived to destroy the city. Let me see. Archer, archaeological evidence points to an advanced civilization in this area during Abraham's day. Most researchers also confirm some kind of sudden and devastating destruction. It is now widely thought that the burial, buried city lies beneath the waters of the southern end of the Dead Sea. 
How is that when he destroyed it? I thought it burnt up. Or well, maybe it's like a burnt land. Okay. So let's go on. Ooh. And when the morning arose, then the angels hastened Lot, saying, Arise, take thy wife and thy two daughters, which are here, lest thou be consumed in the iniquity of the city. And while he lingered, the men laid hold upon his hand, and upon the hand of his wife, and upon the hand of the two daughters, the Lord being merciful unto him. And they brought him forth and set him without the city. And it came to pass, when they had brought them forth abroad, that he said, Escape for thy life. Look not behind thee, neither stay thou in all the plain. Escape to the mountain, lest thy least thou be consumed. And Lot said unto them, O oh, not so, my lord. Behold, now thy servant hath found grace in thy sight. And thou hast magnified thy mercy, which thou hast shewed unto me in saving my life. And I cannot escape to the mountains. Let some evil take me, and I die. Behold now, this city is near to flee unto, and it is a little one. Oh, let me escape thither. Is it not a little one? And my soul shall live. And he said unto him, the angel, Yes, I have accepted thee concerning this thing also that I will not overthrow this city, for the which thou hast spoken. Haste thee, except thither, escape thither, for I cannot do anything till thou become thither. I mean, you got to get out of here. I can't kill you. My father told me not to hurt you, because you is connected to Abraham. Therefore, the name of the city was called Zor. The sun was risen upon the earth, when Lot entered into Zor. So in other words, he's saying that when the angel brought him out of Sodom, he took him outside that city to a place that was nothing but close to the city. And he was telling, the angel was telling Lot to run, to escape, to go, to get away, because he's destroying the whole Sodom and Gomorrah. So every part of it, any connection to it, anything close to it was getting burnt. So what Lot said was that, please don't leave me like this. I don't have nowhere to go. If you destroy the whole city, where am I going? So let me go to this little city right here and protect this little city and don't touch this little city, please. So that's what the angel said. He said, but go Hurry up and get out of here because I can't do nothing until you go. All right. So now, then the Lord rained upon Sodom and upon Gomorrah, brimstone and fire from the Lord out of heaven. And he overthrown those cities and all the plains. See what I'm saying? He was destroying not only, in other words, he destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. So that's just like destroying Brooklyn and Queens. And anything that was close to it. Anything between. So that means all the bridges, all the houses that was that was on the side of the bridge, all the houses that was that was within five feet, ten feet, twenty feet of the bridge, all of that was destroyed. Why? Because it was connected to Queens, it was connected to the Bronx. Okay. And he overthrown those cities and all the plain and all the inhabitants of the cities and that which grew upon the ground. But his wife looked back from behind him and she became a pillow of salt. And Abraham got up early in the morning to the place where he stood before the Lord. And he looked towards Solomon and Gomorrah and towards all the land of the plain and beheld and lo. The smoke of the country went up as the smoke of a furnace. Mm. And it came to pass when God destroyed the cities of the plain that God remembered Abraham and sent Lot out of the midst of the overthrow when he overthrew the city in the which Lot th dealt. Wow. Okay, 
so let me see what else. Let me read the last footnotes of this. The story of Sodom reveals that the people of Lot's days, of Lot's day, had to deal with the same kinds of repulsive sins the world faces today. That's what it's all about. That's why he didn't like it. Repulsive sin. That means, you know how people react on impulse? So this is re. Re is usually something that is inner. Right? So they they these repulsive sins is things that just come to them. Yeah, let let's try this. Let's try that. Let's do this. Let me let me go this way. Let me get in let me let me go do it through this hole. Let me try this hole. Let me try this hole. Who knows? They probably was having sex in the eyes and the nose and all ugh, disgusting. Okay. So now um and they saying that the world faces this today. Look, look what we got here today. Look what we got here today. We got the same thing going on. We got AIDS stuck out here. We got all these different STDs, all these different things. Lord have mercy. Now we got COVID sticking up. Next thing you know, COVID going to be connected. Something going to be connected to COVID. Alright, so they got a vaccine for COVID, but God forbid something else comes up that's connected. Tell you. So they saying same kind of repulsive sins the world faces today. We should follow Abraham's example of trusting God. His selfless his selfless faith contrasts with the self gratifying people of Sodom. Lot had lived so long and was so contented among ungodly people that he was no longer a believable witness for God. You know what I'm saying? That's why his relationship was questionable. So you see, this brings a point out very well. That even being saved, if you are not doing right, right? It, it leaves a question to God. But there may be a servant of God that is <clears throat> fully, unconditionally serving God and praying for you, interceding for you. And that's what's causing you to get to your next destination. Okay. That he was no longer a believable witness. Believable witness. So you can get to the point where you'll be among people. You'll be a child of God. You'll be a servant of God, but they won't be believing what you're saying because you done went back on your word for Christ so many times. You 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 stagnated. You don't you don't know what you believe in, so you can't get nobody to believe what you believe in because you don't believe in nothing, and you don't know what you believe in. He had allowed his environment to shape him rather than he shaping his environment. Do those who know you see you as a witness for God, or are you just one of the crowd, blending in unnoticed? Lot had compromised to the point that he was almost useless to God. When he finally made a stand, nobody listened. That's when he told his, his that that's that part where he went and was talking to his son, telling him to come. And they were, please, you, you want to tell us something about Christ now? You wasn't talking about Christ over four. Now you're talking about God going to destroy the city? Right. He going to destroy the city. You in it. I could imagine what was going through the head. Okay. Um. When he, when he finally made a stand, nobody listened. Have you, too, become useless to God because you are too much like your environment? To make a difference, you must first decide... To be different in your faith and your conduct. It 
says here, now we go to now we're gonna read on the part where the angels had to go and take Lot's hand. Lot hesitated, so the angel seized his hand and rushed him to safety. Lot did not want to abandon the wealth, position, and comfort he enjoyed in Sodom. It is easy to criticize Lot for being hypnotized by Sodom when the choice seems so clear to us. To be wiser than Lot, we must see that our hesitation to obey stems from the false attractions of our culture's pleasures. Mm. Notice how God's mercy towards Abraham extended to Lot and his family. Because Abraham pleaded for Lot, God was merciful and saved Lot from the fiery destruction of Sodom. That's what it was all about. That's what it was all about. He was pleading for other people, but he oh, he kept it to a to to I guess to a minimum where Lot will be involved. So if it was fifty, so that would give Lot a chance to get out of it. If it was forty five, that would give Lot a chance to get out of it. If it was thirty, that gives Lot a chance to get out of it. Down to twenty. Give Lot a chance to 10. Okay. 10. So Lot will be missed. He'll be able to get out of there. He'll have a chance to get out. You see what I'm saying? If 10. It, but but in other words. If there was 10. Then that means Lot will be one of the ones that will be spared. So let me put it that way. Down to the 50. Starting from the 50. Down to the 10. So. If it come down that you get to 45 and, and, and you're not seeing something, just, just think about the 10. If you get to 10, then it's a possibility that my nephew will be spared. So he was pleading. A righteous person can often affect others for good. James says that the prayers of a righteous man are powerful. See, it's all about being righteous mean right. You're doing right. You ain't doing right once, twice a year. You're doing right constantly. Every day of your life, you're, you're making that effort to do right. And that's what God looks at. That's what he perfects. That's what he goes on. That's how he draws people. He draws people. Mm, I'm learning something here. I'm getting another revelation. He draws people from the righteousness of their heart. That's why his words say God looks at the heart or God knows the heart. That's what he knows. He knows the righteousness, the goodness of the heart of a person. And then he's able to work with that person and draw that person in. And the result of it is whether or not that person will give in and serve him. All Christians to follow Abraham's example and pray for others to be saved. In the story of Solomon and Gomorrah, we see two facts of God's character. His great patience, agreeing to spare weaker city for 10 good people, and his fierce anger, destroying both cities. Wow. As we grow spiritually, we should find ourselves developing not only a deeper respect for God because of his anger towards sin, but also a deeper love for God because of his patience when we sin. Mm. Lot's wife turned back to look at the smothering city of Sodom. Clinging to the past, she was unwilling to turn completely away. Are you looking back longing at the sin while trying to move forward with God? You can't make progress with God as long as you are holding on to pieces of your old life. Jesus said it Jesus said it this way in Matthew 6:24 No man can serve two masters. In this pitiful sequel to the story of the destruction of Sodom, Sodom, we see two women compelled to preserve their family line. Are we in 19 now? They are driven out by lust by the Okay, so that's another story. Let me see what story is that. The 
Delilah and his daughters. So now with that story being told, written straight from the Bible, Okay, let me go to Genesis 14 right quick. I'm trying to get some. That that story told you about the destroying of Solomon. Let me see if I can read just a little bit. So here's, here's some, something about Lot. Lot's greedy desire for the best of everything led him into sinful surroundings. His burning desire for possessions and success cost him his freedom and enjoyment. As a captive to, to Shea the Lama, he faced torture, that's a king, slavery or death. In much the same way, we can be enticed into doing things or going places we shouldn't. The prosperity we long for is captivated. It can both entice us and enslave us if our motives are not in line with God's desire. It's saying they took Lot, Abram's brother, his name wasn't changed yet from Abram to Abraham, who dwell in Sodom and his goods and departed. So Abram heard that his brother was taken. So that's 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 Lot's father. I'm trying to get to oh Melchizedek. He was the king. I think he was that. He's the one that started all this stuff. I'm trying to just find a little bit about Solomon. And Gomorrah, so you can, how it relates in the undefiled bed.
day on time. But I have to look. Judges. Okay, we're going to read it. Solomon Gomorrah have been used historically and in modern discourse as metaphors for homosexuality and are the origin of the English word sodomite, a pejorative term for male homosexuals, and sodomy, which is used in a legal context under the label crimes against nature to describe anal are all sex, particularly homosexuals. See, they trying to say that that type of sex is related to homosexuality and bestility. This is based upon ingenious of the biblical text interpreting, interpreting divine judgment upon Solomon and Gomorrah as punishment for the sin of homosexual sex. A number of contemporary scholars dispute this interpretation. Some Islamic societies and corporate punishment associated with Sodom and Gomorrah. The book of Genesis is the primary source that mentions the city of Sodom and Gomorrah. Okay. So I guess you would have to... Uh, Okay, so I guess we'll come back to this. We'll come back to that because that's a deep story, but you got, I hope, just 
what I read and the different things that I read kind of open up your eye to let you see that that's what the word means with, you know, marriage is honorable and the bed is under foul. Meaning that you ain't got no business doing all that stuff in the bed. You see where it's related to. See, and people don't understand that the reason why the Bible is there is to let us see who our ancestors was. Being born from your mother and father, they are the one that gave birth to you. But God is the one that created you. And you need to understand what your creation is all about. It ain't all about finding out whether you came from a monkey and all this other stuff. No, it's, it's all about why you are the way you are due to the fact of sin and how far down, down the line it is and how far up it's going to go. Are you going to stop it? You can't stop sin because as soon as a child, every day a child is born into this world and every day a child is born into sin. Because the words say you're born into sin and shaped in iniquity. So you have no... <clears throat> when you're born into the world, you have no other choice but to sin because that's what your nature knows. Your nature knows only to sin. That's why the Holy Ghost has to come in and, and lead you and guide you and bring all this to your remembrance so that way you won't so you won't okay so it says, you are born into sin and shaped into iniquity. So iniquity is immortal. It's a noun. So you know a noun is a person, place, or thing. So it doesn't have an action to it. It's just something that exists. So it is immoral, immoral or grossly unfair behavior. So you are born into sin and shaped in iniquity. So you are shaped to be unfair to people, to act certain ways towards people. Why? Because th th this is this is how you are. This is your nature. Oh, Lord Jesus. I can just, I can go on and on and on. So I'm going to have to end this. So I hope you all enjoyed this video. And if you want to hear more about Solomon and Gomorrah, please click on this video. No. If you want to hear more about Solomon and Gomorrah, then Write so in the comments and also like and subscribe to this video so that I will be able to do lines from my phone, please. And y'all have a good, a very good night. And please think on these things, you know. Think on how you can give your life to the Lord and how you can become better acquainted to the Lord and serve him because it's beautiful. It's beautiful to know God and, and and to know him as your personal savior and to have him living within you. It's a beautiful feeling. It's a beautiful thing. It's very peaceful. Okay. That being said, y'all have a good night. God bless you. Bye.